everyone. I am Julia from Unthinkable, and I'm really excited to be chatting with British documentarian Tony Rook today via Skype. I am in Washington State, and he is all the way in the United Kingdom, so I'm very, very grateful to have him uh, here today to chat. Thank you, Tony. Hi, Julia. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. It's almost springtime here. How about you? Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's, it's actually it's lovely in England today. It's really, really pleasant. So um, we're great, we're grateful for that. And um, you know, whatever other privileges the uh, the Lord Almighty government give us. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you chatting with me. I have been a fan ever since I saw your film Incontrovertible. I was sucked in, and then I've heard some other interesting pieces of your story. I know that you've had some interesting relations with the BBC, uh, some some uh, court case there, and otherwise I'm just hoping to pick your brain now in 2021, approaching the you know 20th anniversary of 9/11. I want to I want to hear your thoughts and uh, and appreciate you and thank you in person for what I find to be a, a very brilliant and high quality film. And I will be including the link to the incontrovertible film in the caption on YouTube and the Facebook. So I highly recommend everybody check out incontrovertible. It is awesome. Thank you. So should we start there? Yeah. Um, what do you want to know really? Um, we were very fortunate. We, um, um, I, I did the. Um, I, I, in, in England, um, we have um, a very bizarre thing called the TV license fee, and so if you own a television, and um, I know it's strange for a lot of people. And I've lived in America and, and love it to bits. Um, you can go into a store and buy a TV, and, and that's it. Then you can use it. In England, if you buy a TV, you then have to buy a license to watch it which is a tax. And so you pay a hundred and whatever it was, I think it's 150 quid, 150 pounds now a year. And so um, anyway, I had a TV and I got into 9-11 around about 2004. I got interested in 9-11 around 2004, like a million other people, I think around the world or many millions around the world. I was shown a copy of Loose Change by Dylan Avery. Sure. And um, I found that very interesting. And um, uh, again, cutting a very long story short, uh, I stopped paying my TV license because I, I felt the BBC were lying to me. And, and so um, in, in British law, you do have an equivalent law in America. I can't remember it now. I can look it up for you. Um, if, if, if you believe you are furthering the purposes of terrorism, you don't pay. Um, if, if, for example, you said to me, lend, lend me $100, I want to go and bomb the the, uh, the the bar down the road, I obviously wouldn't give you that money. That would be a serious offence. Um, sure. So my attitude was to pay money to the BBC, who I knew were lying about 9-11, would be the same thing. So I, I wouldn't do it. And, and, and eventually I was taken to court, Julia. And um, what happened was I had to show this evidence to the judge. And, and anyone who's seen... Uh, uh, any coverage of 9-11 or, or my film or, or Loose Change or the many hundreds of films that are out there about it. Um, the BBC reported the collapse of Building 7, which was the third tower on 9-11, the third tower, not the Twin Towers, the third tower, which was yes. not struck by an aircraft um, and had relatively minor office fires, fell at 5.20 in the afternoon. From top to bottom, 600 feet of building um, 47 stories um, at free fall speed for two and a quarter seconds. Incredible collapse. I mean, anyone who sees it says it's, it's, it's a controlled demolition and they are completely right, of course. Yes. Now, the BBC reported this 20 minutes before it happened. In fact, they reported it twice, 20 minutes and, and almost 30 minutes before it happened. So this gave me, in British law, reasonable cause to believe this wasn't right and that I could be funding the purposes of terrorism, that the BBC were lying, et cetera, et cetera. So I went to court um, to object to it. 
and and that and that features in the film Incontrovertible that you were talking about, and and after the court case, it garnered a certain amount of um, uh, attention in this country and and across the internet, and and people were very kind, and and I said, well, I'd like to make a film about it because I have a background in that kind of thing, and and um, we were lucky; we managed to raise thirty-two thousand pounds in in uh, uh, crowdfunding. Which wow. is, I don't know what that is nowadays in dollars, maybe 50 grand, 40 grand or something. I don't know. And so made incontrovertible. But that, that was how the film started. It was me going to court against the BBC and saying, you've lied. Uh, I know you've lied. Um, and then people gave me some money to carry on saying that you've lied. And, and, and so I, I made the film, which, which is a, bit, a little bit broader than just Building 7. It, it gives a chronology yes. of false flag terrorism, if you like, um, throughout, throughout. Well, going back to 1962, I think I started off with Operation Northwards. Yes, um, very important you, thing to know about. Know yeah, 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 yeah. So, so that was basically the beginning of it. Mm. Well, what was the outcome of the court case? Remind me, um, they didn't convict you of anything and you had to pay the court fee, something like that? Yeah, it's, it's a strange thing. I mean, I knew about it. I knew as much about it as as, as you do, really, going into it. Um, it was a bit nerve wracking. What happened was um, I was living with with my wife in a in not, uh, not so far from here, but in a in a, an apartment, and the doorbell rang one day, and a guy turned up. And so because because the BBC have a license fee, they have um, an organisation called Capita, who are um, I guess employed by the government, employed by the BBC to come around and check that you've got this damn thing. And and they rang my bell and they said, oh, we've looked at your address. You don't have a TV license. And I said, well, well, no, I don't. And this is the reason why. And I actually had printed cards. So don't, don't, which I'd hand out in the pub or whatever, you know. Sure. So this poor man was standing there looking at my card saying, you know, don't pay the TV license fee. It's against Section 15 of the Terrorism Act and all this legal stuff on it. And he didn't really know what to say. And like most people in the world, unfortunately, their job is more important than the truth. And, and he said, well, I'm sorry, that's not good enough. I'm going to have to report you. And so we, we went to court. So when I went to court and, and um, what happens before you go to court you have to give copies of your evidence to the judge and to the prosecution. And obviously you keep one for yourself. So me and my poor wife was, was sat up for like three weeks triplicating this crap that we had to give to, to the various parties. And uh, so the judge had seen it um, before we even got there. And what happened was, unbeknownst to me, I didn't know that lots of people were going to arrive. But we had about 120 people turn up for this court case in a very small court in a place called Horsham in West Sussex, where I live, which is a very provincial area. It's not it's not like New York or anything. Sure. Uh, or London. And um, so it was packed and people were queuing up to get into this thing about the theatre. I was I was terrified. I was really nervous. I mean, um, I'm, I'm quite famed for liking a drink. So I was in the gentleman's toilet having a a hip flask of whiskey and three Valium I got off my doctor before I, I got oh, to the court boy. Case. Yeah, yeah, no, I was scared because, yes. you know, I mean, the judge could turn around and say, well, you're going to prison for being a, you yeah. know, a cheeky person or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, I got in there and, and um, chemically calmed down. I explained my position to the judge and, and there were lots of people there putting some kind of pressure on him, I suppose. I explained the situation and, and, I started talking about Operation Northwards, which I'm assuming you know about, and maybe some I of your viewers know about. And so, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not talking out of my hat. This, this is a, a, a real problem. You know, governments do do this, and Building Seven, which was my central argument, um, which the BBC reported twice before it happened. This is an unusual event in news reporting. Gives me reasonable cause under Section 15 to 17 of the Terrorism Act 2000, British law, blah, 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 mm -hmm. not to pay you. And the judge was a little bit, I mean, he knew what was coming. But I think he was quite an honest judge, Julia. He, he, he said, look, even if I agree with you, 
And this is the way the law works, and you have to be careful when you go into court. Today, this is only about the TV license. Your argument is for another day. So what I'm going to do is, and, and the result was, he said to me, normally what would happen if you hadn't paid your TV license for like six or seven years, which I had not, you wow. would get £1,000 fine or worse. And he said, right, no fine. A conditional discharge, which means for three months, it was a three-month discharge, I think he said, if, if, if you don't do anything wrong for three months, we'll forget about this. I said, OK, fine, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so that was that. So I walked away with £200 court costs. But the funny thing was that the, the prosecutor, a guy called um, Garth, came up to me in the pre-trial hearing and said to me, he said, I've, I've, I've seen your film, not incontrovertible at all. He said, this is really interesting. I said, well, yeah, OK, thanks. He said, look, we're going to ask, <laughs> look, we're going to ask for the lowest court costs. Um, um, I said, do you agree with me then? He said, I can't say. I'm not allowed to say. But he actually put money in towards my court costs in the pot, which was really sweet. Wow. So I, I think I made 100 quid on the day because people had a collection. It was really sweet. It was very nice. It was a great day out. I wouldn't want to repeat it. But, um, yeah, we had what they call a pyrrhic victory, a moral victory. And the judge said, no, fine. I don't want to talk to you again. Go away. Blah, blah, blah. He didn't want to deal with it. He knew I was, he knew I was telling the truth, you know.